earn the right, we assume, to select Zion Williamson in the next month's NBA draft. And where does that leave them and him and everybody else for answers to those questions? Oh, look at him. The one, the only, Jalen Rose is up. Hey, 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 hey. <laughs> Thank you, Jay. They covered... the area! <laughs> Covering the Western Conference Finals. We'll get to the game in a minute, but let's just start with this. We've talked about, we've talked so much here this morning so far about everyone but Zion. Was last night a good night or a bad night for Zion himself? Last night was a terrific night for Zion. Can I get everybody to pump the brakes trying to force players to large markets, feeling like that's the only way that they can be successful? Are you people paying attention to the NBA? Tim Duncan won five championships in San Antonio. Dame Lillard re-signed with the Portland Trailblazers. Russell Westbrook re-signed with the Oklahoma City Thunder. LeBron James got drafted by the Cleveland Cavaliers and did just fine. If you're a terrific basketball player like we project Zion to be, performance is going to dictate his marketing. Performance is going to dictate his all-star bids, his all-NBA opportunities, whether he's going to be an MVP. Not the market that he plays in. I know for him as a young kid, he can't help but get caught up in the hype of what happens if I get to New York? What happens if I get to L.A.? Because the adults are caught up in it. But the bottom line, going to New Orleans with Anthony Davis is going to be terrific for him. And I love the fact that I get a chance to cover these things real time because I get a chance to do the takes first. And like I said last night, getting drafted by the Pelicans now gives a couple of things uh, as trade scenarios to take place. David Griffin was the general manager of LeBron James with the Cleveland Cavaliers. He is now with the Pelicans. They have the first pick. The Lakers have the fourth pick. It now gives them the equity for both of those two teams to actually now do a deal. Anthony Davis can now get to L.A. and be happy. Zion now can have some other young parts around him to build with. And now the Pelicans are relevant again. It's a win-win even for Memphis and the Knicks. I think it went great. The fact that the Suns, the Cavs, the Bulls did all of that tanking, yet none of them got a top three pick. It was a great night for the NBA. Totally agree. From an NBA standpoint, I think it was a slam dunk. Let's focus in on the Lakers for a minute and the Knicks, because as I said earlier, the, the, the night started out about Zion, and then it wound up being about Anthony Davis. So the Knicks have the third pick, which is R.J. Barrett, who is a markedly better asset, it seems, than whoever would be in the fourth spot. And he was teammates with and, and very close friends with Zion. Do you think right now the Knicks or the Lakers are in the better position to try and make a deal for Anthony Davis? I think the Lakers are. And I saw my brother Stephen A. Smith's troll video just recently. And the thing about the Knicks is you want to keep the expectations low. Don't they still have two max spots this summer? Don't they have the opportunity to possibly get KD and Kyrie? As long as they're in the top three, they're goody. Of course you want to get Zion and hit the home run. But our uh, job... Morant would have been a terrific prospect. R.J. Barrett is going to be a terrific prospect. If I'm the Knicks, I don't move him. He might be the best player in this draft. Have anybody been paying attention? He actually led the Duke Blue Devils in scoring. And I do have to say this as somebody that has walked across the stage and shook the commissioner's hand. The young people still have to put in work and play up to the expectations and live up to the hype. Duke didn't win it all, all last year, yet they're going to have three guys in the top six or seven. Like, both of these guys still have work to do. R.J. Barrett could easily be the best player in this draft. If I'm the Knicks, yes, I hold on to the pick for now and see what happens with free agency. They're very good. And the Knicks, again, were the only one of the teams at the very bottom of the standings who wound up near the very top of the draft. So just to put a bow on that part of the conversation, do you believe we have seen the end of tanking in the NBA? I gave Adam Silver a standing ovation earlier this morning because you know I hate tanking more than anything. Do you think we have seen a significant end to that? I think so, Greeny. And you and I are in agreement about about the tanking management because it doesn't yield you what it used to before if you had the worst record you were in position to possibly get the number one pick and the odds were so weighted that worst case scenario you would get a top two or three pick so now all of a sudden you do all of this tanking look at the Cavs. i'm happy for john beeline 
He was the coach at the Michigan Wolverines. He did a great job of turning our program around. He's a, an amazing coach, but he doesn't have much to work with now. I like Colin Sexton as a young prospect, but can the Cavs turn that situation around? I don't think so. The Suns still have Devin Booker. They still have DeAndre Ayton. But both of those guys were on the team when they went to the lottery. What about the Bulls? The exact same thing. They have some young assets in marketing and Levine, but they were still in the lottery, one of the worst records in the league. So it doesn't give you the same upside that it used to. Okay, I love it. We're in agreement on that, and that's good. Let's go to the game then. You, of course, there with the whole crew uh, doing the Western Conference Finals, and we sort of somewhat jokingly suggested this morning Portland's defensive strategy last night appeared to be let Steph shoot wide-open threes and hope he doesn't make them. Well, it didn't go well. Steph made nine threes. What did you see last night? You were there. The Blazers' strategy versus the Splash Brothers mirrored the one that I saw of the Toronto Raptors when we were guarding Kobe Bryant. If he didn't have any help, Steph could have easily went for 81. I am not playing. Why is Enos Cantor, why is Collins guarding a screener in the paint while Steph Curry's coming off for clean looks for three-point shots? Didn't we say that he's probably arguably the best long-range shooter we've seen, especially off the dribble? You want to get up and contest all of his shots, especially when you have so many non-shooters on the floor. You have Looney. You have Bogut. You want to live with the percentages of Iguodala. Live with the percentages of Draymond Green. He started to get clean looks, and I said this at halftime. If they keep playing stuff like this, he's going to go for 40. This is what allowed Clay to get going in the second half of the game. I guarantee you there's going to be a definite change to that strategy in game two. Yeah, and we'll look forward to seeing that. And then just super quickly, what do you imagine Kevin Durant is thinking as he watches this? We, we know that he has... Um, an unusual way of looking at things at times. And his team has just looked good, if, if, if not at times better, since he got hurt by putting away Houston the way they did and demolishing Portland in game one the way they did. How would you imagine KD is watching this? I think he's looking at it the way he viewed the Warriors before he arrived. Man, they're a really good team. They won the championship. They've accomplished a lot. But when I'm playing, I got a chance to be the best player on the best team. I think if he was going to leave via free agency, them playing well without him, them struggling without him is not going to deter him coming back when he's healthy, and it's not going to change his mind in free agency. The one, the only, Jalen Rose, live in the Bay Area this morning, covering the Western Conference Finals. Come home soon, my man. We'll see you. Thank you very much, Jay. Thanks for the love. Ah, that's the great Jalen Rose with us. And don't forget, by the way, meanwhile on planet Earth, here's a Nick fan who has a little work in front of him now. Th th that's a Nick fan who made a bad decision. He got himself a Zion tattoo before the lottery. I, I, I don't know, 100% sure whether or not this is real, but, but that's permanent. And, you know, you got, you got the Zion tattoo before the lottery even happens. That's just an absolutely terrible idea. Hopefully that's something he can, Maybe he'll just become a Pelicans fan. Either way, Thursday night on ESPN and on ESPN Deportes, we have game two of the Western Conference Finals. That's at 9 Eastern. Our coverage begins at 8 with NBA Countdown. And it's all streaming live on the ESPN app so you can watch from anywhere. So, so many different things to unpack coming out of last night's lottery. But what we do know for sure is that the function of the lottery is to set the draft order. That has been set. Sean Farnham, mock draft, what are the top five picks going to be? Okay, and again, usually we go from five to one, but let's just start with one because sure. it's not a surprise right. whatsoever. So we we'll start with number one. Hey, folks, it's going to be Zion Williamson. <laughs> Look, you got to love everything that Zion brings to the table. We talked about his defensive effort. He's also a very good passer. He has great awareness out on the floor. So while we fall in love again with his athleticism, his ability to dunk and the highlights out in transition, in the half-court set, he's going to be able to facilitate and make people around well, him So better. that one's easy. Who's let's two? Go to number two. It is John ja Morant. John ja Morant is probably the closest thing we've seen to Russell Westbrook since Russell Westbrook left UCLA. He's an electrifying athlete. We saw him jump over players this year at yeah. Murray State. His passing is fantastic. The one area he has to improve upon is his turnovers. His turnovers were a little too high. I think that's also a byproduct of the talent that was around him at Murray State. Obviously going to be improved when you come to the association. Of course. Number three, we go to the New York Knicks. Again, I think big winners last night are the New York Knicks. They have flexibility here. They could partner R.J. Barrett up with Zion Williamson, or you keep R.J. Barrett, who Jalen Rose just said could be the best player in this draft. I've been saying it. We said it during the course of the season. Yeah. I did a whole video on why R.J. Barrett could be and should be maybe the number one pick in the draft. He's not going to be the number one pick in the draft, but at the end of the day, five years from now, he might be the best talent 
out of this draft, and I think that's the perspective that people need to now keep in mind. Now we get to four. Yes, this is where it gets tricky. This is assuming all these picks stay the same, by the way, and that there aren't movement, that the Lakers aren't trading this pick to the Pelicans. But I would go Jarrett Culver. I think his ability to improve from his freshman to sophomore year, he was maybe the most improved player in college basketball. He's a winner. He led this team that lost four of its most significant scores all the way into the Final Four and a chance to play for a national championship. To me, Jarrett Culver is a star that can defend multiple positions and improving at the offensive end of the floor. And then at five, because they drafted Colin Sexton, I'm going to go with DeAndre Hunter, who fits John Beeline's idea of defensively being able to switch and guard four through one. That's what DeAndre Hunter can do. He also can create his own shot off the bounce. I think he 